On this world, there are people who take responsibility for their own lives and people who don't. Ivo and I are going to discuss this today. We may have touched on it on another video but I think it deserves its own video entirely. How do you take responsibility for your own life? You take responsibility for your own feelings, actions, thoughts, and the consequences of these. Those who step up in power understand that personal responsibility involves the creation process and start to take more responsibility for their lives by creating events through visualization and expectation. Responsibility is freedom. So many people think that being irresponsible is freedom, but it's not. I know many irresponsible people who drink and do drugs and the only thing they're doing is killing themselves. With their party forever attitude, they run themselves into the ground, using mind-altering chemicals to escape the hidden emotional prison they live inside. Responsibility and facing your pain is the route to freedom. The only way to deal with pain is to go through it. I've included a fourth step inventory from Overeaters Anonymous. Just as an example to show you the length some people will go to in order to get clear on where they believe their faults lie and what they need to start taking responsibility for. This inventory is based on the seven deadly sins. When you read it, you'll see it roots out all behaviors that could indicate excessive pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. The answers aren't for everyone to see, either just the writer and perhaps a trusted non-shaming, non-guilting friend. The last thing you need to do is write a confession of your innermost darkness and then have someone shame you for thinking these things. That won't help you release them at all, in fact most people would never trust someone with it again. I have used this inventory without permission, so I hope OA is okay with that. This would be useful for the person who asked me how to bust through the Zeta seal. This type of self-scrutiny is what works, and what makes you happier. The results can be immediate. As I've done inventories, I've felt the actual energy release from my energy field as if it were quickly torn away. It's worth doing it over and over because as your awareness increases, new flaws show up you didn't realize before. The trick to this is keeping the focus on yourself, and not on others' behaviors. You're working on acceptance of others as they are. Like we keep saying, you're perfect as you incarnated on Earth. What happened is you took on false beliefs that told you you were flawed, which led to your being limited, and now you have to release these. Ivo, what is the one mistake the people make all the time, that would stop so much arguing and hatred? One thing that people think that's completely illogical? Ivo, we have been discussing this, yes of course. And that is, that people believe others' behavior dictates your reaction. It does not. Sharon is dealing with a fly right now. With flies that land on her water glass, flies that bite her, and try to land on her food and there was the one who even flew into her opened eye. Sharon typically reacts in annoyance. This is not necessary. You can react to the situation any way you wish. What your people have believed is that, other people react this way, so that is normal. That is what you are supposed to do, and I say to this, it is not. There is no such thing as normal. Change is the way of life, improvement. Normal is a stagnant state. And I might add, the people who now want their normal to return, are regressive in nature. When normal returns to your world, then the possibility of control and manipulation by your governments will again exist. It is time to dispense with this. The one definitive belief that people have that must be taken into consideration if one wishes to become autonomous is the idea that others' behavior has created a reaction within me. This is a false belief. If someone runs past you stark naked, you can respond in any number of ways. You can become incensed, you can laugh and be amused, you can be shocked, you can ignore it. You can respond any way that you wish. The other person's behavior did absolutely nothing to you that you did not choose. Nobody is responsible for your feelings but you. Understand this. Nobody is responsible for your feelings but you. Absolutely no one. The way you respond indicates your state of limitation. 
It indicates where your beliefs must be changed to increase your power. I shall repeat that again as well. The way you respond indicates your state of limitation. It indicates where your beliefs must be changed to increase your power. If you respond with shock, then what is it within you that feels the need to do so? What belief do you hold that says when you see nudity, that you must be shocked? Me, and why do you think nudity is so out of place on a city street but nudity, or states very close to it anyway, are okay at the beach? What's the difference? There is no difference. Why do you get embarrassed at nudity when it's practiced in a place that hasn't been designated as acceptable? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. Why are you allowing others to dictate what you do? I deal with people all the time who have issues with the fact that I don't wear a bra. And I'm rather buxom, to say the least. I've been asked to wear a bra, for that person's sake, so they didn't have to feel embarrassed, and I just said no I've left a job because I wouldn't wear a bra and my side boob, whatever that is, was showing. People are extremely uncomfortable with jiggly, saggy breasts. I'm not, and I dance to my own tune so they can just suck it up. Some people must think I'm a slut because I won't, but you know what, that's their problem. I find them uncomfortable and I frequently get frozen shoulder, so I've dispensed with them. Ivo, when someone says to you, you are so ugly, how do you respond? Why, first of all, let me ask you, have you allowed someone else to supersede your own self-opinion? If someone were to say to Sharon, you are so ugly, she would not care. Me, nope. Ivo, if they said to her, you are so fat, she would simply agree with them because she realizes she is overweight. Me, yes. Ivo, she would not apologize nor would she make excuses for herself, and she especially would not attack the person back with insults. Me, this often gives people the idea that they can say anything to me they want, and then I have to put my foot down and assert myself with them. People are not generally respectful, I find. Ivo, yes, they have a misguided way of viewing assertive, self-accepting behavior. They believe you are a target because you will not defend yourself or attack them in turn. It is difficult for those in the power over others' structure to understand someone outside of it. Yes, they also believe if you are caring and giving, that they can bleed you dry. Me, I run into that all the time. I have to set limits with people and forgive them because they think differently than I do. Then I forgive myself for ever coming to this planet in the first place. Ivo, I do not believe you have done that yet. Me, there's the fly again. He seems to think he can have a ride on my hand as I'm typing. Ivo, you are not annoyed. Me, I'm thinking of lunch. LOL. Ivo, yes, distraction. This can also be a problem when you are not in the present moment. So let us create some more examples. Somebody says something to you that you do not appreciate. You react. How do you react? In anger? That means you believe that attacking is the appropriate response and your anger could be a sign of getting ready to attack. Anger is often used as an intimidation strategy. Then there are those who hang their heads in shame or begin apologizing out of guilt. Me, those people need to get angry. Anger also can mean that you're ready to change something, if nothing more than your choice of acquaintances. Ivo, so, you believe that someone's behavior creates an automatic reaction within you. It does not. Reaction is a choice, rather response is a choice. Reaction stems from the belief that others control your behavior. Those who believe others control their behavior also try to control the behavior of these others. This is the power over others system at work. Take back your power and think about what you will say to the person who you feel offended by. There are so many responses and here are some of Sharon's. You are a jerk, you are an asshole, I don't care, yeah, whatever, laughing at herself is another one of her responses. When someone seeks to make fun of her, she laughs in response to what they have said. She forgets what she learned in her assertiveness training. 
the best response is either to fog the offender, not to respond which is keeping your energy for yourself, or to ask a question, what is it about me that you find so ugly? Calling someone an epithet is an attack of their character. This is attack mentality. Sharon is on a quest to root out all of her attack mentality and dispense with it. Me, there haven't been so many driving incidents lately either. Ivo, no. These have largely abetted. Me, what I have an issue with is when someone says something that I absolutely know to be wrong, yet they think I'm wrong, and what's worse they think I'm crazy. Ivo, as I said, there is no respect in thinking another person crazy. Why do you tolerate people who believe you to be crazy? And then attack you for this at times. Me, why should I accept less than the most respectful behavior? Cluttering up my life with those who aren't respectful is a good way to postpone the arrival of people who are. Ivo, we are always here for you, my love. Nobody should accept less than the most respectful behavior. Now, also we must point out the so often declared excuse, she made me do that. This is scapegoating the other. Yes, it is. Nobody makes you do anything. Unless you have a gun pointed at your head, your family is being threatened, or you are forced to buy your laws, you are not under duress and can think and act freely. You are not under the control of another person who made you do or say something. You can respond in whatever way you wish. And the best way to respond, for your own sake, is in the highest frequency. I ask Sharon to install the frequency chart in this video so that people can see which behaviors are of the ego and which are of the soul. It is best to let your soul respond in the highest of frequencies, not to allow your ego to respond with what you have learned on earth because all that you have learned is contrary to universal law and much of it tends to be violations of others' free will. If your boss tells you, you need to work all weekend, you have many ways to respond. You can get angry and feel hard done by, or you can say, certainly. But I will be taking Monday and Tuesday off in lieu of that. If they come back and say, we will need you on Monday to present this project, then you continue to respond with then I will take next Thursday and Friday off and have a long weekend. If your boss says this is not company policy, then you say, yes, but I require downtime, so I will take it. Me, I've worked in places that if you didn't do exactly what they wanted, like working till 12 midnight every day, and then smiling and looking happy, you'd lose your job. I remember the one guy who said he wouldn't do something and his head was first on the chopping block when cuts came down. Ivo, then consider your choice of workplaces and of occupation. They cannot all be as bad as this. Me, true. Nobody can make you do anything. You always have a choice to respond, not to automatically react. Your reactions show the level of consciousness you're at on this issue and you need to raise it to soul level. When you react, you're working out of learned behavior. You've learned that that reaction is what is expected of you, so stop it and react as you want to. That's your learned behavior, your programming. There is always a step between someone saying or doing something and your response, and that is your thinking process. That has to be taken off auto and put on manual again and be forewarned that it might make you uncomfortable because what you're really thinking and wanting to do will probably not align with the accepted narrative or matrix behavior. Do it anyway. Think about everything you say to others, always. Ivo, this is it, my love. Me, thank you, Ivo. I'm glad you enjoyed, Galaxy Quest, the other night. I heard him laughing while I was watching it. Ivo, it is a humorous film. Just a note. I think the chemtrailing has all but stopped here. Maybe there's no more money in dark budgets anymore and they can't do it. Hope this is the case. Also it sounds like Trump is going to tell the public about the indictments today so I'm watching for news on that.